So I was driving around in LA and I realized that I was right near the Peterson Museum here, a very famous car museum, and I have never been in here before, so I'm eager to check it out and I'm going to take you along with me, give you a, a tour. Movie cars, there's old cars, everything is in here, some really beautiful stuff. So sit back and enjoy the tour of the Peterson Museum. That is intense. Still the best looking Batmobile, in my opinion. But maybe I'm biased, that was really my childhood Batmobile. Although the uh, Tumblr is pretty awesome too. Look at this thing. If you haven't seen Christine, then I think you should go and rent that tonight. Now this thing is a uh, sexy car here, 1958 Le Mans Special. Headed downstairs because I can already see the uh, Gone in 60 Seconds Eleanor and the Mystery Machine here. So I'm going to try to show things that maybe they're not shown in every video because so many people have done videos here. But inevitably, <laughs> there's going to be some overlap because of the different movie cars and things that, of course, are going to be drawn to. But uh, you know, everybody has different interests and things like that for different cars. So hopefully. This video will be different than other people's videos because there's so many cars there's no way you could really show them all without having a three hour video here now this is something you don't see every day a four door 911 it says texas porsche dealer william dick commissioned the custom four door porsche 911s in 1967 as a gift for his wife and to demonstrate the viability of a four door model Los Angeles area fabricator Troutman and Barnes built the custom by cutting a standard 911S in half, stretching the wheelbase and adding a new roof piece to accommodate an extra set of Porsche doors. This is probably going to be one of my favorite rooms of this museum. Starsky and Hutch, the time machine. Of course, everybody shows these, but you can't ignore them. Eleanor. <laughs> this is some version of the mystery machine. Oh, okay, that's from the movie. That's great. This 
This is, oh, this is the Cobra car? Driven in Cobra, Sylvester Stallone. You're a disease and I'm the cure. Nice car. You know, I always wanted one of these, not a time machine, but a DeLorean. And uh, they've skyrocketed since COVID and everything. But before all that, they weren't that bad. Like you could buy one for a decent amount of money. Like, you know, maybe, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand $30,000, you could find them. I mean, the nicest ones maybe were more than that, but I had an opportunity to buy one of these for 10 grand. And I probably needed $10,000 worth of work but I could have easily done it. So I could have been into one of these for uh, like 20,000. And it was an early one, it was, a, it was a manual and it still had the little fuel door because these, if they don't have a fuel door, you have to pop the hood and uh, the fuel doors underneath the, the hood. But the early ones, they had a little door. So that, that hood is very desirable. And uh, it had all that, again, it needed work, but it could have been in my garage and I just for some reason didn't buy it. 10,000 bucks. Uh, I kick myself because now these things have absolutely exploded like all the other uh, used, you know, older sports cars. They've all just exploded in price. We've all heard uh, our elders, you know, our parents say that, oh, I shouldn't have sold that or I should have bought it. Well, that's my story. And of course the Starsky and Hutch car, I wanted one of these too when I was younger. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't really regret not getting one, but I did really like that car. Man, as soon as you come into this room, you are drawn to this. Crazy. Can you see the, the door is a circle. It says 1924 slash 34 Rolls Royce Phantom Aerodynamic Coupe. Man, this thing is unbelievable. It's, um, Art Deco is just screams Art Deco. Whew. Look at this thing. What a beast. show the interior a little bit here if I can look how the windows go down go up and down This is the one just in front of it here. Bugatti. Just stunning lines. 1939 Type 57C Cabriolet.
this 1913 Mercer Type 35J raceabout is considered one of the most legendary American automobiles of the brass era and one of the United States first sports cars. Its large four-cylinder T-head engine and well-balanced chassis combine to make the low-slung raceabout incompetent road-going automobile that could also be raced with very few modifications. This Type 35J is believed to be one of the most original examples in existence and was formerly owned by race car driver Phil Hill. I love all these drawings, these renditions. You can see some of them have the dates on them. 1957, just what their ideas of, you know, what what futuristic cars will, would look like. It's always amazing to see that stuff, in my opinion, just to see they were so obsessed with the idea of flying cars and things like that. Like, no, this is definitely the future. Uh, I don't know. I still don't see it all these years later. But look at this, the Art Deco style, just those ribs. Look at that steering wheel they put in there with all the gauges trying to basically make it almost feel like a, or look like a cockpit in a fighter jet or something. If you're into racing history at all, this is Hurley Haywood's car. Brumos 935. What's crazy about this car is you you know is it's huge compared to a regular size 911 of that era, but you can. If you strip it of the huge fenders and the giant rear, the, the wing, it, it is still a 911. Like this door is a normal 911 door for that, for that era. And then look at the back here. And you can see that without the fenders, quarter panel pieces and the huge spoiler look at that that is just a regular 911 I mean obviously it's nothing like a regular 911 but I'm saying size wise you know you can see it you can see the footprint in there <laughs> Wow I've only seen these on TV. This is the bottom floor is really just, you know, electronic or um, Teslas and things like that. I have never seen one of these up close. It's like a uh, futuristic DeLorean. <laughs> I don't know if they'll ever come out with this. It's been a couple of years now, hasn't it? I don't know that I'd ever buy one though.
Yeah, I guess it's safe to say that electric is the future. Uh, whether everyone likes it or not. It's really interesting though, that this, uh, they showcase a lot of the different technologies that go into these cars. Like this, like how it sees the, uh, the road. Crazy. I wholeheartedly believe in, maybe it's very obvious if you're into really reading about this technology and everything that's up and coming that one day certainly people will look back and be like, wow, you guys had steering wheels? Like you actually drove your cars? I don't think any of that will exist. I think it will just be a transportation device. You get it in, you tell it where you want to go and boom, you go. And you can sleep or do office work or talk to your friends. but. The idea of actually driving through traffic, I think is, that's gonna end for sure. One day will be looked at as uh, archaic. Yeah, very strange, this was an artist who created these. And uh, the guy, as he tells everybody when they walk into the room that he is fully colorblind. So these are just his, uh, artistic uh, renderings. It's kind of cool though, I think. I guess if, if these cars were artifacts and they were dug up, you know, years later. It's kind of cool though, he cut into the panels and puts, you know, stone kind of sticking out of them. Crystals, kind of neat. Okay, so here we go. This is inside the vault. So the vault is in addition to the upstairs, the regular museum. Uh, I don't remember what the regular museum costs, but the vault is like an, an addition, additional $25 or something, but there's like 300 cars down here. It's, it's really a whole museum in itself, so it's certainly worth coming down to see it. They do give you this uh, pamphlet here where it talks about the different cars that are, that are in here, so we'll see. So an, an Enzo next to an F40. Hmm. For a long time, this was definitely one of my favorite Ferraris. Not necessarily my favorite cars, but favorite Ferraris. These things, like all the other used cars market, have uh, absolutely skyrocketed. I think these are over a million now. All right, so this is a LaFerrari. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm a fan of exotic cars. I am. But I think as time has gone on, I've been more, I, I just, my interest in cars is really, you know, 80s and 90s. I mean, I, I like a, certain, a, a bunch of older cars, of course. Um, but just regular, almost regular cars or regular sports cars, not as much like, like I've never had a, one of these on my, like on a poster or something like that. And I, I, I wouldn't, but it's an amazing car, uh, for sure. It is, uh, both of them are equally in my mind, incredible cars. But what I really like about the Volt is that there's, it's not just newer cars and exotic cars. It's. I don't know why they're down here, but it's just different. Like this MR2, I don't know. It's just uh, a lot of strange and different cars that are down here as well, which I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, my, I have a very eclectic interest in cars. 
as well as everything else, movies and music, not just one genre. I don't even know what the heck this thing is. This thing looks like a beast. Huge brakes on it. Let me see what this thing says. A 2020 Lakari Sahara. It's a turbocharged seven liter Chevy V8 in it. So was that the Corvette motor? Man, that thing is crazy looking. <laughs> the classic Viper. And the old bug eye Bugattis. Wow. You never see these things. And if curves aren't your thing, you can go for the low res car 2015. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh you can kind of just go for that that is strange so i remember seeing these uh like pictures of them they only made a certain amount of gold ones i would never want one though even though it's gold whatever but to me a delorean in any other color other than just the stainless steel just doesn't doesn't look right see so why wouldn't this be up in the uh that room with the other Art Deco style cars. 36 Auburn Speedster, the boat tail Speedster. That thing is sexy. That should be up in that room. You know, another thing about that, that red F40 Ferrari in there, I don't know if this is true, but I had always heard that because of all the scoops and the Venturi uh, effect that's underneath the car that basically the air goes in and creates like a almost like a vacuum the faster it goes it actually sucks or pushes down sucks and pushes down with the spoilers and everything the, the uh, downforce the wind that theoretically then they never tested this but theoretically if the road were to go upside down the car would actually stick because the pressure that it pushes down and sucks down from the Venturi is greater than the actual weight of the car. But I guess that's just a theory, I don't know. But kind of a cool conversation piece, but not something that you would ever wanna try. Uh, certainly not nowadays where the, the cars are well over a million dollars. And look at this, just sandwiched in here. <laughs> I'll get to this. The OG Batmobile and the motorcycle that comes out of the tumbler. Wow. Oh, okay, so it's not the original. This Batmobile is a replica as depicted in the TV series from the 60s. So I guess if it, for it to be upstairs, I'm guessing it has to be like uh, absolutely legit and perfect. Strange designs though. This has to be a George Barris mobile. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it's a uh, custom bill for John Wayne. 
That's hilarious. Uh, to me, this screams of George Barris, but there's no plaque here. I don't know if this is screen used, probably not, but it's fun to look at as these always are. So I don't want to get too close because uh, the lady, when you first come down here, the lady said, try not to walk in between the cars because there's alarms. So I don't want to be that person. But some of these, yeah, I would like to get closer to, but that's okay. Boy, this is interesting. 1998 AC Propulsion, credited as being the inspiration for Tesla vehicles. The innovative T0 was developed by engineer and AC Propulsion founder Alan Kokani. Or Cosoni. Uh, da, 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 high performance electric drivetrain. This T0 is the last ever built and retains its original lead acid battery configuration. Its unique vehicle to grid V2G system, the first ever fitted to a T0, allowed it to discharge energy when plugged in, giving it the ability to power a home or building. That's fascinating. I don't know how much power you'd get from it, but. Uh, at the time, it says top speed 120, horsepower is 221. There's only three ever built, though. So this is all the way back in 90, 1998. Imagine seeing this. It's not that far off. I mean, you could actually kind of even see a little bit of a Tesla in this a little bit, the bumper and... I don't know, maybe it's just my imagination, but I mean, this wouldn't be very good for an accident, that's for sure. Lead acid batteries, especially. This is the car from Blade Runner. This is 1982 Deckard sedan driven in Blade Runner from also uh, from 82 are used in uh, Blade Runner. You know what's funny about that Blade Runner car is that it's pretty customized. Like it looks pretty futuristic even now. Like imagine what it looked like in the movie or you know if you're looking at it from the eyes of early 80s like that was very futuristic but you know when you look at like uh, Back to the Future 2 which was I believe came out in 89 those future cars they were just Mustangs and Ford probes and things like that with body kits it's just so funny they didn't really take that much consideration into doing anything with them to make them look much more futuristic so I don't know I just thought that was interesting I, I thought I saw something about um, Bob Gale saying that uh, you're never going to get it right, so why not just have fun with it? Or, you know, as far as talking about, you know, future, creating what the future will look like, you'll never be right. And I kind of understand that. I definitely, I can respect that. It, to me, it, it's certainly, if anything, it actually is more endearing. It just certainly does not take away from the, uh, the movie. But... Here's a bunch of old, older indie cars, 95 McLaren, MP410. I can't imagine what it would feel like to uh, operate one of these things. So one more thing to complete my tour of the Peterson Museum here and it's this lifelike Hot Wheels car with the box and it even has a price on it. Very fitting for this museum. See you in the next video.